And welcome to Washington, D.C. For those of you who don't live here, necessarily. And I, I just saw that my good friend, Congressman Kai Kahele, is here with the Hawaiian uh, members of the Hawaiian Native community. And I'm so happy to see you, dear friend. Thank you for being here. It's very nice. So, Judith, thank you for that kind introduction. I'm so happy. And thank you for your years of advocacy and hard work to bring attention to indigenous communities in the most meaningful ways. Huatsi haupa. Greetings, everyone. It means so much to be here with all of you and to recognize the incredible journey you all have taken. I'm honored to be joined by the chair of the Council on Environmental Quality, Brenda Mallory, and I thank Brenda for acknowledging that we are on indigenous land. I want to acknowledge the organizers of this event, House of Tears Carvers, the Natural History Museum, Native Organizers Alliance, Illuminative, CC Lay for everything you do and have done and will continue to do. All of your hard work has led to this moment, to this spot. The fact that we are all here is not insignificant. When our nation's capital was established, its policies were intended to exclude us, to assimilate us. Laws and policies were written without considering indigenous communities' challenges or their strengths. And we are working hard to undo so many consequences of these actions. Today and every day, we break barriers to those institutions and systems that were designed to keep us out. Our paths are crossing in this moment because we're coming together in a new era. An era of truth, of healing, of growth. An era in which our indigenous knowledge is valued and respected, in which indigenous leadership has a seat at the table to make decisions about our communities in which we have an opportunity to rise above the challenges our people face and build a brighter future for all of us. It's a new era in which our country recognizes the dark pages of our history and listens and learns from that history so that we can all be a part of meaningful tribal engagement to bend the arc of the moral universe toward justice. Your journey, like the wind, the birds, the water, carry the prayers of everyone who has laid hands on this totem pole. It is a heavy load to carry because we know that all of our actions inform our future. And I have hope for the future. I have hope because it's ingrained in who we are as people. It's the same hope that my Pueblo ancestors had when they survived famine and drought, when they settled along the Rio Grande, cultivated crops and preserved our culture and traditions through the hardest of times. The attempts to take away our traditions, our languages and our cultures failed because we are still here. It's the same hope that brings all of us together for our people, for our communities, for our earth. Every time I visit a protected sacred site, it gives me hope knowing that all of us are working to honor and respect these important places. All of you give me hope. As we move forward in this new era, we do so with the support and the respect of President Biden and Vice President Harris. And their commitment to live up to the federal government's trust and treaty responsibilities. We do so knowing that when we work together, we can realize our collective vision to ensure a brighter future for our children and our children's children. All of the speakers on this stage, the artists who use their generations of traditional craftsmanship to carve this beautiful totem pole, 
and the folks who used their time and energy to make today possible are fierce. I'm honored to serve as your Secretary of the Interior and to be with you at the culmination of this journey and know that this is a beautiful step in our much longer march toward justice. My prayers and thoughts are with you as we continue our work together, as we raise awareness, as we seek a brighter future for all of us. Thank you all so much for being here, and I am so happy to see every single one of you. Thank you.